I guess let's get started with the uh, performance and power analysis session. Our uh, first speaker is Shu Lu from College of William and Mary, and he's going to talk about hardware address sampling. Take it away, Shu. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for uh, for the introduction talk. Uh, so I'm very happy here to give the talk, and uh, my talk is about uh, how can we use the the, uh, the existing sampling techniques to build an efficient performance tool to identify the performance bottlenecks in the HPC application. So let's first see the motivation part. So this is a typical uh, microarchitecture of a processor. And uh, you can see that there can be multi cores that are on chip, and uh, there's a main memory that are attached to the, to the chip. So uh, to bridge the speed gap between the core and uh, the main memory, so we always use the cache. Okay, so uh, it's really important to leverage this cache and uh, get better performance. So we also have a more complicated architecture, it's called the NUMA, the non-uniform memory access. So this can integrate multiple microprocessors on the chip, and uh, it can maximize the, the memory bandwidth. So, uh, so for, uh, for a core, it can, uh, it can access the memory directly attached to the same microprocessor, it's called the lo local access. And also it can access the memory that's attached to uh, another microprocessor called the remote access. So, Typically, the local memory access has much higher bandwidth, but much lower uh, latency. So it's better that he, uh, we can maximize the local access and avoid any remote accesses. So given this complicated uh, memory hierarchy, how can application, HPC application to take advantage of them? So the main point here is that we want to avoid any memory bottleneck in the, in the program. So how can we do that? The, uh, the first, we have to keep good data locality. And the second, also keep the good data locality. Okay. And the third, steal the good data locality. Okay, yeah. But the, the three different data locality, they have different meanings here, okay. The first one is the spatial data locality. Think that we have a cache, there are five cache lines there, and uh, if we reference the, the, the cache that's across the cache line, this means that every access you will get a cache miss. So this is a really bad access pattern, okay? So what we can do is that we can change the access pattern to access the, uh, to access the cache line in the unit stride. And this, uh, this can largely reduce the memory, uh, reduce the cache misses. And the second type of the locality is the temporal locality. So still with the same cache structure, and uh, if we want to stream a data, a, a chunk of data, and this data chunk size is much larger than the cache space, okay? So we do this, and uh, if we want to visit the data at the beginning again, we will get the cache miss. So the problem there is that it's our, uh, the data at the beginning of this chunk already evicted by the data, uh, by the remaining data that of this chunk, okay? So how can we improve this temporal locality? Well, what we can do is that when the data is in the cache, we want to use it um, as much as possible. And the third locality is the NUMA locality. So if we have multiple NUMA domains and we allocate all of the memory that in only one NUMA domain, but access this data from all, from all the threads from all the NUMA domains, this means that a lot of threads has to access the remote, uh, have the, a lot of remote accesses. So it can either saturate the bandwidth on this NUMA domain zero, or it can uh, suffer a lot of latency from the remote accesses. So the optimization can be we just uh, collocate all of the data with the computation. And uh, there's no remote accesses, and uh, also the memory uh, requests are balanced across different numeral domains. Okay, so give this uh, optimization strategies, the thing is that how can we identify the program, the source code, to, to find the optimization opportunities? So the problem is that that's not easy. So here I uh, list some uh, state-of-the-art techniques. Uh, the first one is the simulation method. So which means that it, uh, it uses a simulator to monitor the program execution. And it can monitor every memory uh, access and, uh, and the fit them uh, into the simulator and get the detailed execution. So the good thing is that it can provide deep insight that into the program behavior. But the thing is that it really has very high overhead. It's typically a simulator can incur more than 100 times slowdown to the monitored program. So 
the current research point from this simulation method is that they want to get, uh, they want to use, uh, reduce the, the runtime overhead, but also still with uh, maintaining this deep insight. So another direction here is that the measurement me uh, method, which means that it's just they use some sampling techniques provided by the, uh, by the hardware performance counters supported in, uh, in the architecture. And uh, the good thing is that it has uh, incurs very low overhead. But the thing is, uh, it, uh, it uh, uh, analyzes the program based on the lossy information because it's sampling. You cannot monitor every memory accesses, access. So the current research uh, along this direction is that they want to obtain the deep insight and also maintaining the, uh, the low overhead. So you can see that the two directions they want to meet at the same point here. Okay, so uh, for the simulation method, there are uh, two intrinsic uh, uh, weaknesses for, the, for, for it. So first, uh, although that they try to reduce the overhead uh, using some software sampling mechanism, but the, the overhead is still not low enough. It's still like two to five times uh, slow down for the monitor program. And also it's based on the simulator. It's not a real machine. And we care the real machine, right? It's, uh, so for the complicated architectures and also memory hierarchies, it's really not easy to simulate. So this is the intrinsic uh, weakness for the sim uh, simulation method. So we just uh, focus on this, uh, uh, on this direction. So, so we want to build the, uh, the, uh, build the performance tools using the measurement method and uh, to, to, get, uh, to see whether we can get deep insight and with low measurement overhead. So here we talk about the, uh, the motivation and uh, also because this, uh, we use the address sampling. So what is address sampling? So actually address sampling is uh, supported by the hardware. And uh, we define the address sampling if, uh, if this sampling mechanism support at least three necessary features. The first one, it should sample memory related events like memory accesses, cache misses, or the NUMA event, the local accesses or remote accesses. Second, it should capture the effective address touched by this sample, uh, sampled memory access. And third, it should record the precise instruction pointer of the sampled memory access. So this is three necessary features. And also there are at least the two optional features, like it can capture uh, some, uh, some uh, very useful information like the memory access latency uh, that's in cycles. And also it can, it may sample some instructions or uh, instructions uh, or events that's not only related to memory access. So based on this definition, so we find that in modern architectures, there are uh, five different sampling mechanisms called the address sampling. The first one is the instruction-based sampling supported in the AMD architecture. And uh, the second is the max event sampling supported by IBM power. And the third is the data address register sampling supported by Intel Helm two, uh, sorry, Intel Atenium 2 and uh, th uh, fourth uh, is the, the precise event-based sampling supported by the Intel Pentium and above. And finally, it's the, the, the precise event-based sampling with the load latency that's supported by the Intel Nihalem, uh, Ascending Bridge, Every Bridge, and above. So uh, existing tools, they built on some of these mechanisms uh, or, uh, and, uh, or all of them, and they try to get the, uh, the, the performance insight to the application. So also review some uh, existing work on this. So for the using this different address sampling mechanism, uh, it can build, we can build the tool that identifies the temporal and spatial locality in the cache. So tools like this, like uh, uh, doing this, like HPC toolkit and uh, cache scope. And also it can be used for the NUMA problem that uh, the tool like the MEMFIS, MEMPROF and HPC toolkit. So the good features for this kind of tool, like they, they have very low overhead. Typically the overhead, measurement overhead is less than 10% to the uh, monitored program. And uh, also they can support efficient uh, data attribution. So they can provide code-centric attribution and the data-centric attribution. So I will talk what is the data-centric attribution later. So because I'm, I was highly involved in the HPC toolkit project and uh, I want to use this HPC toolkit uh, as an example and show that how we built the performance tool that's based on the different address sampling mechanisms. Okay. So here is the overview of the HPC toolkit, how we do the, uh, the metric or the sample attribution. So HPC toolkit is a corpus profiler. So 
which means that it uh, always can get the, the calling context of every sample. Okay, this pro provides very deep insight into the performance. So let's see how can we do the code-centric and the data-centric attribution based on this address sampling. So we first create a set. So this will monitor every heap allocated variables that are uh, allocated by malloc, calloc, or rely alloc family functions. So once we find, uh, we, we wrap all of the malloc function, and when we get this allocation, we determine the call path for this alloc allocation. And then we also record the memory range allocated by this malloc. So this range uh, can be used as a uh, unique, unique identified by, this, uh, by the name of this variable or by the call path of this variable. And then when we take a address sample and we use the effective address captured by this, uh, by this address sample and find that this sample touches the interval of this, uh, of the touch the memory interval allocated by, uh, for this variable. So it will determine the call path, the full call path of this sample and uh, link this to the allocation point. Okay, so there can be multiple samples that touch the same variable, and uh, we aggregate all of them and, uh, uh, and associate it with the allocation point. So there also can be multiple allocation points because there can, you can allocate multiple heap variables, so we can compute all of this, uh, we can track, track all of the heap allocated variables. So besides the heap allocated variables, we also have the static variables. So which means that the, you allocate the, the variable using static or uh, in the, uh, at the uh, global space. So because the, glo uh, because the static variable, they are in the, yeah, in the symbol table. So we just uh, can grab the name of the static variable and also the memory range allocated that's in the symbol table. So instead of using the allocation call path that to uh, determine a static variable, we just uh, use the variable's name. So we attribute all of the samples to the, uh, to the data allocation or data name. We call this the data-centric attribution. And also we attribute all of the samples with their full calling context. We call this code-centric attribution. So uh, HPC Toolkit can, create, uh, can do this, uh, can collect this data-centric and the code-centric profile for each thread. And, uh, because it also works for the HPC applications, typically you want to scale this to using multiple threads, multiple MPI processes. So this means that there are a lot of profiles that you generated during the program execution. So HPC Toolkit also aggregates all of these profiles that into a compact one. So the aggregation uh, stage is like, it first aggregates all of the, 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 uh, the variables allocated if the variables, they have the same allocation call path or the same name, they will be, they will be merged. If they are diff have the different allocation call path and the different name, they just uh, keep the two copies. And then the merge happens uh, uh, for the, all of the code-centric attribution. So they merge the, you can see that they merge all of the call paths that are related to one data object and uh, to show the compact view. So the merging not only merge all of the samples, but also merge all of the metrics collected along with the sample. So given this uh, basic idea about how to do this data-centric attribution, I want to show that how we built the tool and uh, how we, in the tool, how we show the, the performance insight here. So this is, the, this is the graphical user interface provided by HPC Toolkit. Uh, you can see that from the top pane, it shows the program source code. The bottom left pane shows the profile, the data-centric profile and the code-centric profile. And the bottom right pane shows the, the performance metrics. So for this code, we, uh, this is a Lulash code, which is an important application benchmark from the LLNL. And we run this, uh, this benchmark on a uh, machine with eight Newman domains. And uh, we monitor the Newman-related events here. So the metric name called the, the, uh, the remote DRAM access. So it monitors remote accesses. And uh, we can see that there are 68% of the total remote accesses related to the heap allocated data. And uh, we can see the call path, uh, allocation call path for a variable. So you can see that the call path is from the main function directly to the malloc. So uh, we can map back to the source code and see that the allocation for this variable 
or for this array, it's called z. So z is allocated, and we find that z accounts for 7.7% of total remote accesses. And uh, all of the call paths underneath of the allocation points are the access, uh, are the full calling contacts of the accesses to the, to the variable z. And uh, if we click here, and we can also map back to the source code that used the z. You can see that the source code I show here, uh, the, uh, the, the last line, and uh, you, we access the z here. So uh, we need some uh, menu analysis to see that the z is allocated only in one numa domain, but accesses, uh, but accessed by all of the threads from all of the numa domains. So this means that the, the one, that one numa domain's bandwidth can be easily saturated, and uh, the optimization can be we just uh, interleave all of the pages allocated for z, and uh, we balance the memory requests, so we can so we can avoid the memory. Uh, we can avoid the bandwidth congestion that in only a single numa domain. So the performance improvement here is about 13%. So we reduce the experience time by 13% for this application. So I would like you to remember that we use the interleaved allocation. And uh, so this is the optimization uh, guidance that we, we achieved here uh, with the data-centric attribution that we got here. But is this the best? So we don't know actually from, from this figure. But the thing is that actually it's not the best. We can do better. So here, uh, I want to say that only this measurement method is not enough. So we do the data collection, we do the data attribution, and uh, there are a lot of efforts we still have to do manually, right? So we still uh, not glean enough deep insight into the program execution. So what we want is that we want more insight and uh, we, want the, we want some intuitive guidance for the optimization. So, uh, so, only, so current work that, that cannot meet our requirement. So uh, my existing work actually focused on different, uh, uh, focusing on the, on the analysis part besides the data attribution and the collection. So we move one step further and see that how can we analyze the program and provide more insight. So, uh, currently, we uh, focus on the NUMA locality optimization, so we can do this offline optimization and the online optimization with more insight. And the catch locality, so we do can provide the program guidance that what's the array that you can do the regrouping to benefit the spatial locality. And also, what's the structure you can do the splitting that to avoid the catch fragments, to avoid the catch, wa catch line waste. And also, there are the, we also focus on the, uh, the simultaneous magistrating architecture and how can we enhance the, the data locality between different SMP threads. So finally, we also uh, extend the tool to identify the scalability bottlenecks in the program. So uh, typically, you can think that the scalability may not always be the uh, use, using the lock, using the synchronization or something. It can also cost by the memory accesses. So we identify the memory bottleneck that, uh, that hinders the uh, scalability. So because I don't have enough time for this talk, uh, I just uh, focus on the offline analysis for this NUMA. So if uh, anyone interested in any of this topic, we can talk offline. So I said that, uh, uh, remember that the, the interleaved allocation is not always the best. So I want to show why. So this is a typical uh, NUMA architecture with four NUMA domains. And uh, we have a bunch of data. So different colors here, that means, uh, means that they, uh, they, are, uh, they are requested by different NUMA domains. So, uh, so the, with that optimization uh, for the LULASH, all of the data are allocated in only one NUMA domain, like this, called the centralized allocation. So it uh, has the worst performance, because the bandwidth of the NUMA domain one can be saturated, and also accesses, uh, uh, there are a lot of remote accesses. So with the optimization, what we did is uh, we do the interleaved allocation. So this means that we interleave all of the page allocation to different numa domains. So you can see that the memory request is balanced. That's pretty good. There's no bandwidth, there's no bandwidth bottleneck. But you can see that the, 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 uh, there are the remote accesses are not removed. There are still a lot of remote accesses that in the system. So actually what we want to do is that we want to collocate the data with the, uh, with the computation. So it can, it can both uh, minimize the, the, the remote, accessi remote accesses 
and also balance the memory request. So here is the goal, and uh, we want to identify this kind of the optimization opportunities in the program source code, and uh, provide the guidance for the optimization. So let's see how can we do that. With only data-centric analysis, we cannot do that because you you only know that the data is the problem, but you don't know how how the memory access is there. So what we need is that we want to know the access patterns. So how can we do that only using the address sampling method? That we cannot monitor every memory access. So think that we already have the data-centric attribution. So we know that uh, this is for array A, and uh, we can attribute the memory access to the interval of this array A. And uh, there can be multiple accesses to this array A. So you can see that. And uh, we can always compute a mean max interval for this access, for all of these accesses. So we have this mean max interval for every monitored memory access. Then for the offline analysis, we merge all of this mean max along the core path and uh, can plot this mean max for every thread. There's any uh, context and any variable. So I will show this like this. So we have this all of the core path and uh, because that uh, this method, it can compute the mean max interval for every write node, their lead node. And then we can merge all of these intervals along the core path until to the top, until to the root of this tree. So we can plot this mean max for, uh, for all of the threads. For example, if we, ha if we see this pattern, so the, the horizontal axis is the, the different threads, T1, 2, T4, four threads, and the, 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 and the Y axis is, uh, shows the, the data range. So you can think that uh, this is all the allocation, allocation interval for this variable, for this array A. So this means that all of these, these four threads, they touch different point, different segments of this array A. So they just need different segments of the, the, the array A. And the, what we want to do is that we just uh, allocate the data, like in this blockwise way, to different numeral domains. This can benefit, it can benefit, uh, the, it can, beni uh, it can ma maximize the locality that with this access pattern. So this blockwise allocation with this access pattern is much better than the interleaved allocation. So with this information, our next, next question is that how can we do this? How can we, how can we allocate the data uh, that using this, uh, distribute the data using this blockwise way? So because we want to change this, that in the, in the source code, the source code means that uh, uh, all of the Linux, uh, or sorry, the Linux kernel uh, by default use the first touch policy to allocate the memory pages. So this means that uh, the memory page is allocated to the numa domain if the thread in this dom numa domain initializes this, num uh, this page. So for example, if the T1 first the touch, first the touches the whole range of array A, the array A will be allocated in the numa domain one. So if all of the threads touches the different segments of array A, we can, uh, this array A can be allocated in different, uh, different uh, numa domains. So what we want to know is that we really want to identify the first touch place that uh, first, touch, uh, first touch place in the source code to do the optimization, to redistribute the data. So what we, uh, we do this is that we pinpoint the first touch point, we're using the page protection. So we identify, uh, so we mask off all of the read write uh, permits of the page. And once the, the thread first touch this page, it will track the, the uh, it'll get a segmentation fault signal. And uh, we capture this segmentation, uh, segmentation fault signal and do both data-centric attribution and code-centric attribution. So you can know that we can always attribute the first touch point with its full calling context and back to the variable's name. So here is the result that for the same Lulash code, and uh, let's see what's the insight from this, uh, this uh, further analysis. So it's the same, uh, we find the same array Z problem, and array Z accounts for 7.7% .7 of total remote accesses, and uh, this is all the core paths for the, uh, for the accesses to array Z. So from the, this is the source code. If we see this clear, uh, carefully, we find that the array Z is, uh, is indexed by the G node, and the G node is computed from another array called node list, so it's indirect access. 
So only from the manual analysis, we really don't know that what's the access pattern because this is the seems like the random access. So we also see the first cut point here, and uh, this is the first cut point, and it can map back to the source code. You can see the array Z is initialized there, and this is really the source code we want to do the optimization. So uh, you can see from the from the top right pane, it shows the access pattern analysis. We can zoom in and see that this is all of the plots for different threads in the x-axis and uh, all of the data uh, access different segment of data on the y-axis. So the optimization is like, as I said, we just segment uh, this, the, all of the range of this data array z that into eight numa domains and uh, we distribute one uh, segment to one numa domain. So this is the, uh, uh, so it's not an interleaved allocation but it's blockwise in allocation. And uh, also there are m uh, other problematic uh, arrays besides the Z, so we optimize all of them. So this is the result. So using this block wise allocation, we got 25% of performance improvement, which is much better than the interleaved allocation. So this means that it's really important we get a further step to do the data analysis, not only, not only from the data attribution or collection. So I want to show some other experiment results. Uh, just from the high level, uh, we evaluate all of these different sampling mechanisms, all of these five, and uh, with different benchmarks. And uh, so, all of these benchmarks are, uh, are already optimized by the developers for years. So this is the result that we uh, we got the performance improvement. So it seems that we got all of the uh, this kind of benchmarks very significant performance uh, speed up. And also we evaluate the over measurement overhead based on this address space sampling. So you can see that it works for a lot of threads and also MPI plus threads and the overhead is pretty small. That's only the data centric contribution, we get less than 10% of the overhead. And uh, with more analysis and uh, with different sampling mechanism, we may have different uh, overhead. Uh, with, uh, uh, with the marked event sampling on IBM and, uh, and the perhaps uh, with the latency extension on the Intel Nehalem, so th we get a very small overhead. There are some larger overhead because the, their sampling mechanism has some flaws and we need to do some computation manually. So here is the conclusion and the uh, future work. So uh, the, the hardware address sampling is really powerful. It can identify the performance bottlenecks that the traditional performance counters cannot. And uh, uh, the thing is that it's really important to do more analysis rather than the simple data collection and attribution. And uh, it can expose more performance optimization opportunities in the source code. And uh, the future work, like uh, we need to consider that how can we integrate the, this hardware address something monitoring that's inside the CHAM++ framework. Okay, yeah, so this is the, my, my talk and uh, any questions? Questions for Shu? Nobody? I got a question. Um, so the, the min-max model that you use, to, it's basically like your aggregate model of, of where a particular thread's memory accesses fall. Mm -hmm. That's, so that seems very effective here. But there are certain access patterns that that's not gonna cover. So like if, it, if you could have a field array where the access is strided and the threads access separate cache lines that are interleaved. Do you actually, have anything to handle that? Yes, actually we have a slide there. I can show you offline. So, okay. yeah, so it can, uh, so Mysterious yeah, offline it can handle solution. some, some uh, access pattern, but some, some may not, yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, so our next speaker is Kate Isaacs. And, oh, another question? Yeah. Your question is that how how this so how is related to numa? A uh, lib numa. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the lib numa. So uh, uh, there's no. So actually, we use some lib numa uh, API to monitor that whether this access is remote access or local access. So you can you can pass the lib numa with a address. 
and uh, and at whether it's uh, in the remote access, uh, in the remote yeah, sure, yeah. domain or the local remote domain. But yeah. for the optimization, yeah. we didn't depend on the libnuma. We just uh, using the first touch policy, and so the only thing that you just uh, just uh, change your code. There's no. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks.